So we have discussed the concepts that are related to the equilibrium of forces in 3D. Now actually we'll be solving some of the problems based on that understanding. Now, so let us note down one problem. If you have any questions, you can ask me now, or else actually we can start off. So equal forces act along the coordinate axis. Equal forces act along the coordinate axis. Equal forces act along the coordinate axis and the straight line. X minus alpha by L. Y minus beta by M. Z minus gamma by N. Find the equations of the central axis of the system. Find the equations of the central axis of the system. So this is the problem statement. Now here actually equal forces act along the coordinate axis. So three equal forces are acting along the standard coordinate axis x, y, z and a straight line. So there is one more force that is acting on your line which is located at alpha, beta, gamma and is parallel to the direction cosines given by L, M, N. So this is the equation of the straight line. So if you notice the standard coordinate axis, this is x axis and this is z axis and this is y axis. Now there is an equal force that is acting in the direction of x, in the direction of y and in the direction of z. So three equal forces along with one more force which is having a point of application of alpha, beta, gamma and is in the direction given by the direction cosine L, M, N. So let us say this is the direction cosine. So this is P. Got it? Now all the forces that are acting on a block of mass. So let us say this is a block of mass. On this block of mass actually there are three forces that are acting at this corner and there is one force that is acting at this corner. This is the kind of scenario what it was described. Now in this particular scenario there are total forces of four that are acting. Obviously, it will have an equivalent force of R and it will have an equivalent moment of G. And there is an associated central axis. So the central axis actually, we were asked to find it out. So if you want to identify all these axes, that is the equation of the central axis. So we are interested to find out all these parameters out of this system of forces, right? So all these parameters that are R, now actually you can notice all these forces. If you notice, each force is having its own direction. Now you have to identify the total forces in the direction of X. Let us say if I take X, now actually you need to have the components of the forces given by this system which are acting in this particular direction of X. So if you notice, this is the only force which is acting in the horizontal direction that is in the X direction P, plus there is a component of the force that is acting in this particular direction. There is a component of force that is acting in this direction and there is a component of force that is acting in this direction for this particular force given by the direction cosines. So L, suppose if it is making an angle of theta with the horizontal or alpha with the horizontal, then L is nothing but cos alpha and M is nothing but cos beta. So cos beta is the angle that is made with respect to the y axis and there is an angle of gamma that is made with respect to the z axis. So N is cos gamma. So these are the direction cosines where this force is acting, right? 
So these direction cosines will give a component of the force along the x direction. So the component of the force along this x direction is nothing but P cos alpha. So P cos alpha where cos alpha is L. Hence actually this P into L is this component of the force. Now there are two forces. One force component of this one and one force of P. P plus PL is the essential force that is acting in the direction of X. So P into 1 plus L. Similarly, if you consider in the direction of the Y, there is one force that is acting in the direction of Y. Along with that, there is a component of the force that is acting in this, that is PM. So in the direction of Y, this is P plus PM. So this is equal to P into 1 plus M. Similarly, the third force in the direction of Z actually is P plus PN. So this is P into 1 plus N. So these are the three different force components which is the resultant of all the forces together acting in, in the direction of X and in the direction of Y and in the direction of Z. Now, the another parameter is you are interested to find out the G value. So R value actually we found. So R is nothing but this is Xi plus Yj plus Zk or this can even be written as P times of 1 plus L into I plus P times of 1 plus M into J plus P times of 1 plus N into K. So this is the force which is the resultant force. Now to find out the G value which is nothing but sum of all the couples, all the moments. So to calculate the moment, so this G is expressed as Li plus Mj plus Nk. So this is Li plus Mj plus Nk, this is the resultant moment. Now actually you can find out the individual component of this LMN. So this is L is nothing but you know, for, to find out this L value, there is a standard procedure. LMN you can find out. So that is first actually you note down the point of application of the forces. And then the second one actually you identify the component of the forces. That is the point of application of one that is x1, y1, z1. These are the point of application of the force one. And for two, this is x2, y2, z2. And for three, x3, y3, z3. And for four, x4, y4, z4. Now, these coordinates are, there are three forces that are acting from the origin. So, the point of application of this is 0, 0, 0. And the second force is also 0, 0, 0. And the third force, the point of application is 0. But the fourth force is actually alpha, beta, gamma are the location of the point of application of the force. And the component of the forces, so that is the first force which is acting in the direction of X. So, in the direction of X actually, this is called as capital X1 capital Y1 and capital Z1 are the force components of the force 1 in the direction of X, in the direction of Y and in the direction of Z. So this is only in the direction of hence actually P will be in the direction of X and Y component is 0 and Z component is 0. And for the second force which is acting in the direction of Y, the point of application is 0, 0, 0. But the forces that are R, X2, Y2, Z2. So this is the point of application in the direction is 0 and this is P and this is 0. And if you take the third force, so this is X3, Y3, Z3. So this is the third force which is acting in the direction of Z. So hence this is 0, this is 0 and this is P. So this is the third force. And the fourth force actually, it is acting in one specific direction given by the direction cosines L, M, N. So this is X4 y4 z4 so this is the in the direction of x is pl and in the direction of y is pm and in the direction of z is pn 
so these are the component of the forces in the direction of x and in the direction of y and in the direction of z right now here actually to find out the moment of any force so you have to identify the cross product so the cross product is nothing but see this r cross p is the moment so r cross p is the moment so this moment actually you can calculate with the standard coordinate axis so r implies this is position vector which is the point of application of the force and p is nothing but the vector force right now in this expansion you will be getting so this is yz minus zy sigma i is equal to 1 to n so yi zi zi yi this is the equation to find out the l value so that is the force component so g actually this is li plus mj plus nk so this is the force uh, so this is the resultant movement out of that if you are interested to find out this l value so you need to apply this formula so this is how actually you find out from the cross product so so this actually i hope you understood this one so r is nothing but xi plus yj plus zk so this is r cross product with the force component xi plus yj plus zk right so this is how actually find out the cross product so for i component so this is equivalent to l so l component actually is nothing but so this is i component if you try to calculate you do the cross product of this it will result into the this part of the i similarly if you want to find out the other part that is m if you want to find out so you need to identify sigma i is equal to 1 to n so this is zx minus xz so this is to calculate the value of m similarly so the actually these values are derived from this formula so from this actually this is the j component of the moment similarly the k component of the moment also you can find out from the same principle now actually to summarize if you want to identify this l m n value first actually we calculate the l value so l value is nothing but you can simply remember ad minus bc so if you are interested in the i component then forget about this x then actually you calculate ad minus bc value and sum of all will give the l value so here actually 0 minus 0 so this is 0 plus and here actually ad minus bc so this is 0 minus 0 this is again 0 and then even this one also 0 minus 0 this is again 0 and then actually the last part is beta pn minus gamma pm beta pn minus gamma pm so this is the l component so l is equal to p if you take out beta n minus gamma m so this is the l component similarly the m component is again ad minus bc where a is this one and d is this one and b is this one c is this one so ad minus bc so this is 0 into 0 minus 0 into 0 this is 0 plus similarly 0 into 0 minus 0 into p this is 0 similarly this one so 0 into p minus 0 into 0 this is again 0 plus <coughs> gamma into pl minus gamma in alpha into pn gamma into pl minus alpha into pn so this is coming out to be p if you take out gamma <coughs> l minus alpha n gamma l minus alpha n similarly you can calculate the last component that is the n component is equal to n component <coughs> so if you take out the last row now ad minus bc so 0 into 0 minus 0 into p so this is 0 plus this one so 0 into p minus 0 into 0 so this is again 0 plus and then this one so 0 into 0 minus 0 into 0 this is 0 plus alpha into pm minus beta into pl alpha into 
PL minus beta into PL. So this value P if you take out alpha M minus beta L. So this way actually you were able to find out the L M N value which will give the resultant couple. So the resultant couple G value is equal to L I plus M J plus N K where L M N are given by. So L is P times of beta M minus gamma M and L M is given by. So P times of gamma L minus alpha N and N is given by P times of alpha M minus beta L. Got it? So with this actually you are able to find out the equation for the G value. So we found the R value, we found the G value and the next one is the equation of the central axis. So that the equation which is nothing but the locus of all the base points where it all results into a wrench is called the equation of the central axis or actually it is even be called as the equation of the wrench or the X of the wrench. So R direction, G direction and the equation of the central axis are one and the same. So hence actually now we remember that formula that is nothing but L minus equation of the central axis. L minus, so that is from the same formula we can derive AD minus BC. So YZ minus YZ, so small YZ. divided by x is equal to m minus ad minus bc again. So that is small z into x minus x into capital Z divided by y is equal to the third one n minus ad minus bc again. So that is xy minus yx divided by z is equal to p. This p value actually you can write in terms of the invariance that is lx plus my plus nz divided by x square plus y square plus z square. So this is so this is the equation of the central axis or the axis of the range. Got it? Now from this actually we have calculated these values. So these values actually L, M, N value we have calculated already and then this X, Y, Z are nothing but the position vector of the random point of the central axis and capital X, capital Y, capital Z are the force components in the direction of X and in the direction of Y and in the direction of Z. So we can replace these values with the corresponding values then actually you will get the equation of the central axis. Got it? Now actually we can replace it. So L value actually we have calculated and that is coming out to be, so L value we have calculated as P times of beta N minus gamma M. So P times of beta N minus gamma M beta N minus gamma M. Yeah, beta N minus gamma M minus Y into, so Z value actually we have calculated. So the Z value is this one. So P times of 1 plus M, P times of 1 plus M, one plus N, not M, one plus N minus Z times of capital Y. So P times of 1 plus N. whole divided by the x component of the force. The x component of the force is P times of 1 plus L. So from this actually you can cancel out this P, P, P here you can cancel out and then actually we can simplify further. So this is beta N, beta N minus gamma M minus Y into 1 plus N plus Z into 1 plus N whole divided by 1 plus L. So this is some constant P. Got it? Similarly, you can derive this value, this value and then actually this value 
you can substitute in the equation which will give the equation of the central axis. So this formula you can remember and apply. Why? Because so this actually we have derived already previously. So you don't need to derive again because it takes a lot of time to derive. 